Well, praise God, and we thank God for this, another Lord's Day. This is the day that the Lord have made, and we are rejoicing, and we're glad in this day. I want to thank all of you uh, that are logging in now for joining us for This Is My Story. Listen, not only is this my story today, but we need to also say This Is My Story slash spotlight on music because our guest today is one that can fit that category very well and certainly we are praising God and I'm going to ask you to do this for me. I need you to like and share, uh, prepare for thumbs up and get in the comments section all of our friends all over everywhere. All of We're on the Fellowship of Music and Arts page, we're on Andre Sonny Woods page, we're on uh, Bishop Andre S. Woods page. We want you to share in the dialogue with us today. Very special man of God, great friend and brother for many, many years. And as uh, soon as I say his name, all of you across the world are going to know who this young man is and what he has done in his musical career, his ministry over the years to bless of uh, the Detroit gospel music area, Flint area, Michigan, the United States, the world. And I want to introduce to this platform, this is my story today, my friend and brother, Elder Jeffrey uh, LaValle. Bless you, man of God. Good to have you with us. Bless you, Bishop. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you. Oh, man, listen, we got a lot to talk about. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was just talking with um, Joey Britton on Friday, and I told him he was going to be on today, and he might jump on and holler at us. Uh, I had a wonderful awesome. opportunity to interview him on this past Friday night. And listen, man, uh, I'm going to stop. We're going to have a word of prayer, and then uh, we're going to start our dialogue, okay? Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for the man of God and all that he means to the body of Christ universal. We ask now that you will bless this conversation. We pray that it will serve as an inspiration and a help to those who are listening and those that shall view this later, especially to those in ministry, the music ministry, the preach word. God, we pray that you will uh, speak to uh, LaValle's heart today, that he might inspire, encourage songwriters, musicians, directors, ministers alike, God. We thank you for this privilege, and we ask that all that we do will be for your glory and yours alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, yeah. listen, man, I don't know where to start, but at the beginning, and 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 I just want you to take your time and uh, uh, tell us all that you've done, because I can just start going down the line from, from, from Aliquippa uh, back in the church in the round, and coming to, to Michigan, and even before coming to Michigan, working with Myrna Summers, and uh, I, I mean, the list goes on and on. Florida Mass, I mean, I, I don't want to leave nobody out because your music spreads the globe. Keith Pringle, I mean, all of the hits, the songs that you have done for Gospel, uh, Baptist Fellowship, uh, New Jerusalem, the Gospel Music Workshop of America, uh, uh, the National 
gospel choirs and courses. I mean, your, your resume is so intense that it would take an hour to read it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Wow. So listen, Jeff, man, just, just take us back to how, how was it that you got involved in your music ministry from day one? What was your humble beginnings? Well, as you know, I'm from Milwaukee. Milwaukee is my home. And uh, I was about four and a half, five years old. And my mom and dad bought a piano for my sister for her to take piano lessons. And uh, I would go with her every week to the piano lessons. And there was, I don't know if you remember Bishop Milton Perry. He used to run oh, yeah. revivals around the country. And he came to Milwaukee and ran a revival at my church. And he prophesied over me as a child and said that I would be a musician that would travel the world. And oh, and my father immediately, when we got home said, no son of his would ever play the piano. Uh, and on August 3rd, 1958, my father was killed in a train truck accident. And uh, I had been going with my sister to piano lessons back and forth every week. And one day my mom said that it was in September, the next month that uh, she heard this one song being played over and over and over. That was a part of my sister's lesson. And she went in the living room to tell my sister, okay, it's time to go to another song now. And it was me. Uh, so I've been pretty much playing since I was five years old. Uh, I started playing for my church choir. Uh, at the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ. Yes, I'm a Kojic baby. Uh, I started playing for my church choir when I was six years old. Uh, and then I started directing the choir when I was like eight or nine years old. So I've been involved in music ministry all my life. That's pretty much all I know. Man, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, uh, I remember, I think, what was his name? Curtis, Curtis, Curtis Lewis. Williams, Curtis Lewis, the church in the round. Yes. Uh, I mean, he's come there with C.H. Butler and, and man. Right. And then, uh, uh, then you, you were, before you went to me, what were you before you went to New Jerusalem? I was in Milwaukee. Uh, I came was in here. Milwaukee. Oh. Yeah. I came here when I was 18. But I came to play for a friend's father's funeral. As a matter of fact, it was Jay Callahan's dad's funeral. Uh, and Bishop Floyd, I didn't know that he and Bishop Floyd, Reverend Floyd at that time, of course, were related. But he was in, uh, at the funeral. He asked me if I would come to rehearsal the next day and teach the choir a couple of songs. And I went, sure. And uh, I did it that Saturday. And that Sunday, I played for the choir. And that Sunday afternoon, they had me in the pastor's office uh, asking me if I wanted to move to Flint. And of course, being the Kojic baby that I was, I told him I had to go ask my mom and my pastor because in those days, <laughs> you did absolutely nothing without asking your pastor. So I asked my pastor and my pastor told me no, that uh, it wasn't time for me to go yet. And, uh, my mom said, so she asked me what he said. I told her what he said. She said, well, I tell you what. She said, you're a grown man. And if you want to go to Flint, I'll pack your bags. And two weeks later, I was here in New Jerusalem. But now here was the catch. Wow. I had to join a Kojic church. But I could play for the Baptist people. That was the <laughs> yeah. So I, had, I joined the Greater Holy Temple. It was Holy Temple at that time. And I sang in the choir on Sunday nights, but I played for New Jerusalem on Sunday mornings. And I finally moved my membership to New Jerusalem after two years because I felt guilty paying my tithes to the Kojic church from the money that I was receiving from New Jerusalem. Wow. See, that's that's a story. That's part of history. People don't know. What, 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 what was it like? Take us to the experience of playing for uh, Dr. Myrna Summers. That was, when I, when I say that was a God hookup, that was a God hookup because uh, in 1974, yeah, 1974, the Church of God in Christ had their annual music conference in Detroit at Bailey Cathedral. And it was on a Saturday afternoon. 
and Myrna was the special guest. Uh, and I was sitting in the audience because, uh, you know, at that time, all her material then on Atlantic was hot. I mean, it was sizzling. And I used to study her stuff note for note, especially the album she did with Henry Davis. I studied that. I mean, I could play every song on that album note for note. Well, that afternoon, Myrna just started singing her rendition of I Surrender All. And there was someone on the organ that played the verses, but when she got to the chorus, they were lost. They had no idea where to go. And I eased over to the piano and I started playing that. And she looked at me and I looked at her, and she nodded and we went on and did the song. And then the next year, the GMWA was in New York where she did Oh How Precious. And she asked me if I would play for Now mind you, all this time, we never communicated, never exchanged numbers or anything. And, uh, so I played Oh How Precious for us in New York, still didn't communicate with numbers, but it just so happened that one of my best friends that lived in Washington was a good friend of hers. And she kept telling him, I want to try to get that organist that played for me in New York. And he said, oh, I got his number. She gave me the number. I called and there was in December, I found Jesus and I'm glad. So we hooked up and we were together about 10, 15 years. Man, that's awesome. And then Florida Mass. How did you end up in Florida Mass? <laughs> Florida Mass, I got the call from Milton. Uh, I think it was their third project, Being Encouraged. I got a call from Milton asking me if I would come and just do some work, you know, play some organ. And that's all I was supposed to do, was do organ on the first sex, the, the, the session. And it was me and a guy named Darrell Washington. Uh, the late Tim Lindsay was on bass. And Danny McCrimmon was on drums. So we were the band. And Herb Jacobs, of course, who, who passed last year from Florida Mass. But uh, that's how I got that hookup. And then from that album, we went to the next album, Thank God for the Blood, and on and on until they're actually their last album, uh, Holy. I only missed one album after that. Um, and that was because my pastor said I couldn't go. Something was going on in church. And you know, I'm a, I believe in being obedient. So the pastor, what he says goes, you know, so I missed one session, but I was on all of their projects. Wow. 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 That's, that's, that's awesome, man. I'm telling you, um, that, that particular recording and, and then the following recordings and then of course, GMWA yeah. and then, then all of what new Jerusalem did. I mean, just go down the list, man. I mean, <laughs> one of my a lot of people talk about me because when I first heard Almighty God, uh, I was at St. James and we sung it, we sung it, we sung it, we sung it till we sung it some more. And even when I was pastoring, that was one of our choir's favorite, favorite numbers. Almighty God, listen that song and uh, hallelujah. Uh, I mean, we can go down the list, your arrangement, uh, we'll understand it better by and by, and then all of them. I mean, you got, uh, and then not long ago, Kanye West did one of your tunes. Yes, sir. I mean, worldwide. I mean, man, what kind, what, how do you feel hearing your material on those kind of platforms? I was stunned. Uh, as a matter of fact, when he uh, did it, there was no communication between us. You know, people ask me, well, how do you get in, in touch with Kanye West? You know, well, like, you know, it's not like he's calling me on my cell phone saying, La Valley, let's do so and so and so. I have never spoken to the man. I have never had any communication. I'm quite sure that the connection of my song came from Jason White and Philip Cornish. I really believe those are the guys that introduced him to my music. And I was here at the house one night and my niece who lives in Phoenix called me and said, Uncle Jeff, Kanye West recorded your song. And I said, yeah, girl, okay, goodbye. And I hung up on her because I thought she was joking. And then one of the local guys here had heard it and told me that I needed to go and look for it and listen to it. And sure enough, there it was. I mean, I was like, it was an honor for me. And I know some people say, well, why are you honored? Because that man chose your song. Well, 
out of the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of songs that he could have chosen, you know, to record, to even consider for recording, you know, uh, he chose one that God blessed me to write. You know, I can't take credit for what God inspired him to do. You know, I can only take credit for what God gave me. And for him to do that, for me, you know, it was an humbling experience because that kind of stuff doesn't happen to me. You know, I don't write to write hits. I heard one songwriter say, I write hits. All I write is hits. And then I haven't heard anything from him since. But that's not me. I'm not a hit writer. I, I have to be inspired to write. And I've learned over the years that I have to keep a pen and a pad and a tape recorder or something that I can record with by my bed because some of my best stuff comes in my sleep or it comes when I'm least prepared or near a keyboard. So um, for me, it was an humbling ex experience. It still is an humbling experience. I'm, ex you know, to, uh, I'll be 68 years old tomorrow and nothing like this has ever happened to me before. So I'm ecstatic, I'm ecstatic. Oh man, well, we, we need to be celebrating and singing happy birthday today, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> bless you, bless you. Thank you. Another, another year. Yeah. 68 years, Doc. I'm well, most of us, we we all close behind you. I'm telling you, boy. We're uh, here. We, we, we're getting there. Thank God we're here to celebrate. Yes, Happy sir. Happy birthday to you and thank, thank you. God for you. Well, listen, man, tell us, tell us about uh why you at New Jerusalem. And uh uh, uh we had a chance, Reverend Nix took you and I down to St. Louis. We did that recording with them. But right. but talk about all of the recordings one by one, the songwriting, the contributions with uh, uh, New Jerusalem? Well, the first one that I participated on was The Lord Is My Light. Um, well, no, that was the third one I participated on because we actually had two before everything will be all right. We did one in 1973 that was entitled For the People Had a Mind to Work. And we did one in 1974 that was entitled Blessed Quietness. Then in 1978, they did um, the Everything Will Be All Right with James Cleveland. Um, and that's where the choir took that national leap. And uh, when it came time to do the second album, I figured Reverend Cleveland was going to come in and produce that. But it was the production was done by Milton Bigham and Curtis Hayes and I had to do all of the choosing of material and that type of thing. And uh, Lillian Bognight, who we call Big Mom, had written this song called The Lord Is My Light. And we sung it for testimony service down on Clipper, you know, with tambourines and stuff. We just went, oh, the Lord is my light. I mean, we were going for you know, because that's how they had sung it. And uh, I asked Big Ma if we could record that. And her response to me was, as long as it ain't on no R&B record. Now she was in her 70s then. As long as it ain't on no R&B record, I don't care. And that song swept the country, you know, and that's why I'm telling people, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't, you know, if God has gifted you or given you something to give to the people, give it. Don't be ashamed. You know, there's somebody that needs the message that you have. Um, then we went from that one to, oh, you've been mighty good to me. And we went on to, oh my God, we did seven albums on Savoy. We did three albums on SOG, which was the the biggest one for us there, of course, was John Key helping us with Show Me the Way. And uh, that was a great time working with him. He was one, I mean, just down to earth, nice guy. And we're still uh, good friends from that experience. John is a very extremely talented musician. And a lot of people don't want to give him credit for what he does. But John is good at what he does. He's a solid songwriter and he's, he's a good teacher. So we did that, and we did uh, three albums on uh, SOG, and we were in the planning stages of doing an album on March, uh, May 9th last year. However, COVID uh, stepped in, and of course, all those plans uh, went down the drain. But trust me, we're coming back this year to do either late this year or early spring to do another album. It's time. I've got material, I've, and most of the people that were in the choir then are still in the choir. So we will, we're coming back with another recording very soon. 
Well, man, we we we're gonna be looking forward to it because I'm telling you, uh, we're starving. We <laughs> said, as I said to the people, and they, you know, some people get mad at me, but I say, well, I can't help when I was born, what I've heard, what I've seen, what I've experienced. I'm, I'm I love the new music, some of it, uh, uh, and I'm, I've adjusted to it. I, I play it, I teach it, and uh, working with choirs and churches, we we sing it you know, some of the praise and worship stuff, but uh, I still maintain there's nothing like a good church choir for nothing. a church. I mean, nothing. because an uh, 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 ensemble is limited to the sound that a choir can produce, Right. you know, and um, listen, man, a choir with the right music staff, soloists, and you put that whole dynamic together, man, you talking about heaven on earth. And, yes, and we've seen it, we've heard it, we we've experienced it. We've been and, a and part so, of it. So yeah, <laughs> we've been, been a part of it, man. I remember, I think it was like two or three years ago, we were all at the uh the workshop. I'm I've been trying to remember the song you taught uh to uh, uh I think it was the men's department or something, uh one of one of your latest. Uh, or, or compositions that you might have talked to the workshop when we were in Atlanta, uh, one of the last conventions they held there, uh, and and how oh, that song, friends. yeah, I mean, I, I, and and I'm not just saying this, but listen, Jeff, every time when people see you go toward a piano or organ, or step toward the front to just teach or direct, I mean, they sitting on the edge of their seat because. We know we get ready to be blessed. That there's, there's things that I've learned, and 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 uh, sitting around you guys like like you, Tommy, I mean Twinkie and Rudolph Stanfield, and I mean so many so many others that I learned to pay attention to uh, way back in the day. Frank White and yes. and those guys, Dorgan Needham and and uh, Ralph Long, and yes. I mean Donald. I mean, I can just go down the list and start naming uh, uh, premier legendary musicians. And uh, I always look at it as another opportunity uh, to get into a class setting. When you guys hit the instrument, I mean, it's like a theory class. It's like a music class. It's like uh, getting something. You're going to go home with something. The song, uh, how it's played, how it's taught. I mean, the whole dynamic, I mean, there are very few musicians who come with the whole package, who can not yeah. only write, but who can teach, and then who can play. What, and I say all the time, musicians like yourself, and I say that when I was at St. James, it's a difference between working with a minister of music who tells you what he wants, as opposed to one who not only can tell you, but can show you and show you you're right. And, and yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's right. the dynamic. Yeah. That's the dynamic you bring to the table. That's been a blessing uh, to all of us across the country. I mean, that, that we've witnessed your material. Now, now answer me this. How did, how did Keith get a hold uh, uh, to that hit, you know, true victory. We were together in a workshop at David Allen's, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I taught it to David's workshop choir and Keith was a guest at that workshop. So I asked him if he would sing it for me. Sure. And he sang it. I mean, he turned it out at the uh, concert that Sunday. And yeah. about six months later, I got a call from Milton and said, man, you got a hit on your hands. I do. He said, yeah, man, that true victory. Huh? I had no idea that Keith had even recorded the song. And that, uh, that was the beginning of our, our, our relationship working together. You know, and he did an excellent job with it. He did what he wanted to with it, yeah. made it clean, did, you know, did an awesome cut. And from there, uh, we, the next one I think we did was the one that Tommy arranged uh, on the Perfect Peace, Peace album was Save to Serve. And then the next one was No Greater Love. Uh, yeah. I've been blessed to pretty much have one on almost all of his projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
I, I used to tell them all the time. I said, man, if, if anybody can get in on this boat, on this train while it's on the tracks, they better get in. Yes, sir. Because uh, Keith, you know, he he is he is an awesome artist and he don't mind singing. Right. You know, he don't hold nothing back nothing. with his crazy self. I tell him, I said, boy, boy you crazy. You just <laughs> but we he love is. him. We love, we love us some Keith Pringle, I tell you. And Keith, if you live, then we shout out to you uh, and bless you, man. So, so that tell me, Jeff, you, you've been music. I mean, it's been like 40, 50 years of consistency. I, I, I need you to talk to these musicians about, uh, uh, like you just made a statement that is so, so important. You said somebody wrote a song and then they go on the scene and off the scene and you don't hear from them no more. Or they're trying to write hits or whatever they're trying to do. And right. uh man, you have experienced longevity in in gospel music. Uh uh as, as you you you've been around for generations. And so now this generation is coming to know uh a Jeffrey Lavalley because of the music. They were singing your music and had no idea where it came from. Right. You know, I mean, you could go true. almost to any church and say, is it hallelujah, salvation? And, and go, they, listen, every soloist, every choir was jumping on that song across the world then and now, you know, and uh, uh, it's, it's such a blessing and so refreshing. And sometimes I get tickled, man. I tell you, I. I, I just laugh my head off when I hear conversations like, oh, man, when did that song come out? Oh, hey. I got to get that thing. And I'm sitting there <laughs> looking at them. I say, y'all really want to know the date on that composi on composition? And y'all want to know the writer? I said, that wasn't written 10 years ago. It wasn't written 20 years. I said, that song is uh, 30 years or better. Yes, sir. You got to be kidding, Woods. I said, no. I said there are writers like like Tommy. There's writers like like Jeffrey Lavalley and Twinkie and all them who 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 uh, write timeless music, and um, it's such a tribute, man. Talk to these musicians about uh, uh, longevity and humility. Well, the Bible says in Proverbs eighteen and sixteen that a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. So many of us are so busy trying to make room for our own gift that we don't give God the opportunity to operate and place us where we need to be. I have never had to ask anybody, can I put a tune on your album? I have never had to ask anybody, can I play on your session? I have never had to ask anybody, well, man, you know, you need an extra or something I can do. You need me to direct what? God has opened every door. Bishop, he's opened every door that I've ever walked through. The good doors and the doors that I didn't think were so good. God opened the doors for me. You know, I didn't, you know, even with my home church, that was the Lord's doing. To, to place me at New Jerusalem for that time, you know, and everybody's looking at the season. Well, some seasons last longer than others. I'll be celebrating 49 years at New Jerusalem in December. That doesn't happen now because we're not, you know, it's not about the dollar. As much as you want, you know, yes, you know, you want to be paid. I understand that. But don't base what you do on the dollar because your talent is worth more than they can pay you anyway. Don't cheapen yourself over $2.50 more over here. You know, stay faithful to where you are, remain committed, you know, and, and, and one of the things that they're not teaching now that we were taught, Bishop, was to be obedient uh, at, at, to your pastor. They don't, they don't teach that anymore. They don't tell that. There's no faithfulness. There's no commitment. You can't make a bond with a pastor and you only there three months because somebody else offered you a dollar more on the other side of town. 
You know, you have to be willing to, to, to make the sacrifice to be a part of a ministry. And I'm looking at people that are playing at five and six churches. How do you do it? You know, you got to have an awfully split personality to be able to play for five or six per churches and be effective at every one of them. You know, make a choice, make a decision, allow God to open those doors for you. I'm telling you, if you allow him to open the doors for you, you can never lose. You can never go wrong because God makes absolutely no mistakes. He makes no mistakes. So we have to stop depending upon our gift and just allow ourselves to depend on God and be faithful to what we're going to do. You know, sure, you may make more money doing R&B. That's fine. But it's going to be difficult to try to straddle the fence and do both worlds. That doesn't work. Trust me, I tried it. It doesn't work. You have to make a decision as to what you want to do, you know, or how you want to be blessed, how you want to choose, how you want to serve. And don't look at Kirk Franklin's career. You don't know what he had to go through to get where he's where he is. You don't know what time a man had to go through. In our day, you didn't know what James had to go through. James Cleveland and Reverend Nix, we didn't know what they had to go through to be who they were, to become who they were. And also, one, be you. Be who God called you to be. Be who he made you to be. And be the best you that you can possibly be. Wow. That's what awesome. More, what more can I say? I mean, you know, we were taught different. Yeah, we came yeah. in. We we both had the experience of going through all of the changes of gospel music. You know, from the Dorsey era to the Cleveland era to the Hawkins era to this current era. We've been privileged to be a part of all of these eras of gospel music. I'm sorry, I forgot Andre Clark. Can't forget. Can't leave him out. But we've oh, been yeah. a part of all these eras. And look how God has blessed us. You know, yeah. and, uh, he's blessed us tremendously. You know, we don't want for nothing. We've been taken care of. You know, we may not have all the health and strength that we need, but we, as the Bible says, we have a reasonable portion and we can't ask for much. <laughs> we have a reasonable portion. I know that's right. We're still here. That's the main thing. Here. Still here. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I, I'm so excited to hear that. And thank you for sharing that uh, so unselfishly because, you know, one of the things that, that we've been doing, trying to do here in Detroit, and, you know, you, you uh, when we started the Fellowship of Music and Arts, I asked you to work with us on the board. We, we tried to do free workshops, no charge. Just say, y'all come, you know, because one of the things that they, they say about us uh, you know, that, that we are old school, you know, I'm like, whatever that means, but, uh, right. uh, I, I tell them all the time, you know, y'all, y'all should pray to live to become old school. Cause if, if you hit 40, you know, they're going to start counting you out the game. Yes, sir. They used to, they used to count you out at 50. Now the new 50 is 40, you yes, know, sir. everybody, everybody trying to go backwards. But but uh, what's so relevant, even with this today, is, I mean, we're virtual now, and uh, uh, all of that. I was talking with Kern. You remember Kern Bradley, the bass player? He played yes. on one of my one of my projects, and they did a, a nationwide interview with him about the business. You know, because he traveled with Lady Gaga. He played with right. most churches. He played with a lot of gospel projects and. Uh, uh, and so uh, he was just saying, you know, the playing field is level. This pandemic put everybody out of business. Yes, they care what you was, what you were playing, who you were playing for, what nobody working. Right. You know, everything was shut down. And, and he made reference to the same thing uh, to say to musicians, you know, just just be humble and, and, and um, uh, be a man or woman of integrity, you know, be on time and and uh, follow through and, you know, you can't make a killing all in one spot. Right. You know, uh, like I used to tell some artists, you price yourself out the market, 
yes, you know, sir. trying to uh, go after the dollar. And so uh, I pray that musicians who are logging on and listening will, will pay attention to what you're saying, because not only are you just saying it, you're living proof of, of what the result is in uh, taking that attitude and walking it through uh, throughout your entire gospel music career. So you say you're getting ready to work. You're working on a project. Y'all getting ready to do something real soon. Well, oh, it's man. going to be within the next six to nine months, yes. Six to it's nine fine. months. Now, and now this is going to be the choir, a choir project? Oh, yeah. This is going to be my choir project. Yeah. I, oh, I, man. New Jerusalem. Man. Yes, sir. We're coming back. New, New Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That's, that's, not, that's, that's not like that's we really... Be awesome. Not that's like we really awesome. went anywhere, but, you know, uh, it's funny how we build up these, we helped to build these companies, and then all the companies dumped us for these solo acts, but now the companies are looking for choirs again, you know, because uh, they're missing out. You know, people are buying the, the praise teams or whatever, but, you know, these 7-Eleven songs die real quickly. Oh, you sound like Jimmy Abington now. <laughs> yeah, they, they die real quickly. And that's why you have they have to continue to write hits, you know, what they consider hits, but they don't last. And there's a whole nation of people that are looking for choir music. And that's what we sing. We sing choir music. We sing Sunday morning music, you know, because that's what we do. Yeah, I, I know, I know for a fact. You know, being a part of the gospel music workshop, some of those same uh, gospel announcers that I had contact with over the years, some of them, especially in in the Bible Belt and in the South, I get calls all the time, and I, I used to tell uh, the owner of of Sound of Gospel, Armin Blady, listen, a lot of that stuff is on vinyl. These people are trying to find the New Jerusalem, the Tommy Whitfield, the St. Yes. James stuff. The Rudolph Stanfields, or the, the beginning of the Clark sisters, and yes. all of what you got, all of that old Maddie Clark, you know, stuff, and even even when uh, uh, Lawanda Nero Butler was on the label, and and uh, Harvey uh, Strickland Jones. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you're oh, yeah. going back, grabbing all of these artists, and then uh, Jerome Farrell, yes. you know, was on the label, and and then you you had so many different artists that came through that label. Oscar Hayes. Yes. And, and I mean, Donald Vales, Coy Liz. I mean, he even did a few GMWA yeah. uh, 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 recordings on Sound of the Gospel. And also uh, uh, the late Rev. James Cleveland had his own label, King James King Records. James, that's right. Yeah, so they're calling saying, listen, where can we find this vintage gospel music? I said, well, we got to do some research and hopefully I've been trying to talk them about going back in there uh, uh, and, and, and digitizing everything and putting it out. Uh, there's a few things out on iTunes and, right. And the different outlets, but some of the older stuff that people are really trying to get that good old solid gospel choir stuff, man, I had somebody even uh, put some stuff out and call me about free spirit. <laughs> back, back. I said, oh my God, y'all were really going back now. Way back. Yeah. Uh, now that's back when Reverend Cleveland did New Jerusalem. Right. You know, he did it with the uh, Free Spirit Choir and, and all of the songs that that, were, that we did on there. Uh, Richard Clean, Mr. Clean was yeah. on there. And uh, I mean, man, that, that was that was a classic. Uh, uh, experience uh, for for us in gospel music, and then of course everything that everybody did following those years. So, uh, answer me this: How do you see uh, gospel music, and where where is it going now that we're getting back to in person worship slowly? I mean, uh, 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 what should musicians uh, prepare for? when it comes to uh, preparing their Sunday morning worship? I think what they need to prepare for is developing their own identity at their churches. 
everybody's church can't sing everything. You, you know what I'm saying? And then everybody's church ought to have their own identity music wise. You don't play like me. I don't play like you. We don't play like each other. So, you know, our churches have different identities. You know, it, it's time for us to be creative enough to write music for our own houses. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, yeah. as, as we've been doing for years, you know, it's time for us to start writing for our own music that speaks to our people because if it speaks to our folk it's going to speak to everybody eventually but you know it's not about trying to make it a hit let god inspire you to write and then in your writing make sure that whatever you write is conducive to the word of god if you can't find it in the word of god don't write it don't be writing no lies tell the truth <laughs> you, know, you know we've had we've passed that stage now where we have to make up stuff and make up stories to write. We know the word now, and, and musicians, that's one thing we really can't stress enough. You have to know the word, because if you don't, you'll find yourself writing crazy tunes and singing crazy tunes, and your people, this stuff that we sing becomes a part of us in our ministry, so you can't do that. Make sure that you're writing and creating stuff for your own houses, for what you do that's best, where you work on Sundays, you know, and if you're not working at a church on Sunday, you know, fine. Still write stuff that's conducive to worship for services. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's one of the things a lot of these musicians are unprepared to do. And um, it's, it's sad that they are un, unequipped and not ready to do that. So, so talk to us about how you approach writing your material. Just just a song, you know, that, that, that just say your last song or, uh, and then preparing for an album, your research, finding material, or are you writing, arranging all the material yourself? I try not to write all the material myself because I don't want my albums to sound like me. Okay, I want them to have their own identity. I want them to have the identity of New Jerusalem. So I try to get material from friends of mine that I know that write good, solid stuff. And that's basically for every project that I go on. And I know, you know, there are producers that when you hear their projects, you hear their identity and not the identity of the artist. I want to hear the artist's identity. So I try to find material for my choir that uh, fits them you know, and you may have to dress it up a little bit or put stuff in order to do a little tweak to it, but I don't take it out of context. I try to keep it just the way it is. And even in, in, in doing other people's project, it's their identity that needs to shine through, not mine. So I try my best to live by that, to make sure that when you hear it, you're going to say, oh, that's another Jeffrey the Valley project. No, I want you to be able to say, oh, that's a New Jerusalem project. I can tell that by the way the choir sounds it's their identity not my identity that's what should be in the forefront yeah yeah i i i'm glad you said that because uh when i did my first group session i i was a little nervous but i was thankful enough that i had within the group writers and soloists and other musicians within their own right right and uh, and I said, listen, y'all need to contribute something because I don't want, I know me. I mean, I get into a vein and uh, God only knows. I can't tell how many scraps of paper and, re and, and back in the day with cassette recording that I threw away because uh, everything was sounding alike. <laughs> right, right. Well, I was like, okay. It. This song sounds like the last one, so let me scratch that and go another way. But I was fortunate enough to uh, uh, have have uh, those that contributed uh, in they, with their own material, and they trusted me to help them with arrangement or something like that. But right. uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad you said it. That is that is so key. And and I noticed that a lot of artists, you know, uh, are, are doing that even more. Uh, Hezekiah Walker and, and uh, Ricky Dillard and all of the choirs that are out there, they're reaching out and they're bringing in uh, writers and uh, they're auditioning their material to see if it fit. 
what right. they want to do on their next project. And that's that's awesome. That that is all. So songwriters, there's opportunity, you know, uh, for you to get your material out. Start writing. Yeah. You just never know. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm so proud of one of the guys, uh, Jason Claiborne, uh, out of the St. Louis, I mean, out of the Louisville, Kentucky yes. area. I know his dad, his dad and them, uh, his mom and them from the Anderson, Indiana uh, chapter of the Gospel Music Workshop of America. I knew them from kids. Now his sons, Frankie's sons, and grants, yeah. all this, man, everybody down there, the whole family can sing and write and play. Is is so so awesome, and so we see that manifestation and um, in the new generation and this generation of songwriters, musicians, and and all of those that are coming along, and so uh, Jeff, just tell us not only about you know you because you you're one of those capable musicians who can go from piano to organ, organ to piano, and some musicians. They're either or, they're either a great pianist and a mediocre organist, but very few musicians can master both instruments. And, and, and what is your formula and your secret? Because you do both so well. Um, I, I, there's a, I would prefer playing the piano because for me, to me, there's a certain amount of dignity and a, a certain stance that comes with playing an organ um, that sometimes I don't feel like having. <laughs> uh, 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 but when I want to go to church, nothing but that organ is for me, you know, and nothing like a good B3. And I always tell people I have never in my life heard an organ that sounded like the organ that was in St. James. I don't know what they did to that organ. But that was the best sounding organ in America. I mean, I would just, every time anybody would play it, I would just float away. You know, because the sound was totally different. Um, I love to play piano because I can express myself. I feel uh, better on piano. But wherever you want me, put me. I'm going to give you the best I got to give either way you go. That's awesome, man. I, it's something you mentioned that St. James sound calls. I felt the same way when I went there. I, I, when I got there, man, they had the old main overhead and a Leslie at the far end of the choir stand and another Leslie at Up the end. Up in the back of the end of the corner. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then when they took it down, they put it at the end of the pulpit area and the acoustics in that building, man. I mean, I mean that, like you said, I mean, that organ, when we would do our broadcast, we were worried about the sound and how it would pick up. But man, it was so balanced. That organ sound, I mean, you know, it, it was it is it, it was just there. I mean, Peaceful. it was just unexplainable. Such a, a awesome sound and yeah. and and to give you the acoustics, uh working with the building and, and those, you know, see Reverend them, you know, he liked to run that bass, so he. Right. He wanted, he wanted, he said, man, I need two Leslie's. And you know what? When we went to Ford Auditorium, we had three Leslie's. Wow. He had one up there with the drums and the, the bass guitar and all that. Then he had two, one at each end of the stage. And wow. I'm like, I said, Reverend, you're not being fair. We got one baby grand piano and maybe another keyboard. You got all these speakers. He said, well, you know, that's just our trademark. And, and truly it yeah. was. It was and church. Be, because uh, 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 just like on your albums with New Jerusalem, you know, you all, you all uh, got so much of your own sound until when the intro started. We knew it was Jeffrey Valley on that piano or somewhere, you know. And that's how Nick's was. I mean. Oh, yeah. Every time you hear St. James song, one of the first things I I look for is the introduction. Because I knew he was going to give it the Charles Nix sound it. on that yes, organ sir. to introduce that song. And I mean, yes, man, it's just. Uh, and do you know, uh, even to this day, 
uh, across this country, around the world, when you say you're from Detroit or you say you're from Michigan or Flint, just like you and myself, uh, uh, people get excited. And it's, it's, it's really something to me because the times when I was really out there traveling, doing workshops around the country, I mean, they made me feel like, I mean, I was really somebody because yeah. I said, I'm from Detroit. You know, and they say, oh, Lord, you from Detroit. Help us with that Detroit sound. Wow. And um, it's such a blessing, uh, such a blessing to be endeared into the hearts of music lovers and singers uh, until when they walk into an auditorium or a building and they without a musician, they say, oh, uh, Jeffrey LaValle, would you please come to the instrument, please? Right, you're right. <laughs> Oh man, that 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 is so awesome. That is so awesome. And you know, uh, I was talking with uh, Dr. Mary Beth Gentry not long ago, and and man, she loves her some Jeffrey Lavalley. I'm telling you, you, go back a long way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, even even Dello Thatford. I mean, there there's so many musicians whom your life has touched even in this area here. And then uh, your, 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 your availability to do the project with the Gospel Music Workshop, the Detroit chapter, working with my brother, uh, Rudolph Stanfield. Uh, talk about that experience because that, that, that's an awesome project. And uh, it's so many good songs on that project. Talk about that for a minute. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought it was a joke when they called me and asked me if I would come and be a part of it. I thought they were kidding uh, at first. And then when they came down, they said, we want you to come down to this meeting and help us pick material. So I figured that's all I would be doing was helping yeah. to pick material. I didn't have a problem with that. And then when Rudy told me that he wanted me to co-produce, I was like, are you serious? You know, because I mean, this guy needs absolutely nobody's help. <laughs> he don't need nobody's help. Rudy can do it all by himself. So it was an honor for him to trust me. Well, trust me to the point where basically I pretty much, he and I did pretty much all of the teaching of the material. And yeah. uh, I mean, Brother Michael Fletcher, Dr. Fletcher gave us the utmost respect, gave you know, the choir members gave us the utmost respect. Uh, Rudy worked extremely hard to get to do that project. And it turned out great. And it's church music. Church. They, it's just straight up, straight up church music. There's not a song in there that can't be sang Sunday morning anywhere. Not one. Right. And that's the kind right. of material that people are looking for. Why do you think people are going back to the 60s and 70s and 80s and grabbing material and singing it like it's brand new? Because they yeah. can't find nothing from the 2000s to say you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that and, was a privilege for me. And and you know, there, there's always uh, this expectation because, you know, Donald, Charles, Nix, you, New Jerusalem, and everybody out of this area, Tommy, the Clarks, I mean, the Winers, I mean, there is such a high standard right. when they talk about anything coming out of Detroit. You know, they're looking for it to be on, like the kids say, on and popping. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it can't every be, no, yeah, it can't be nothing be less. Hot. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so, so uh, uh, that was expected because I knew, uh, uh, and talking to Rudy, once he got his hands on it, what it was going to be like. I mean, uh, undisputed, just awesome, you yeah. know, and um, that's what people are looking for. Out of this, out of this region, out of this area uh, of music, and and uh, we've been talking, uh, you know, the the mass choir type thing uh, that that we used to do, just like the chap Detroit chapter did, awesome project, and and so I, I'm praying that they do some more, do some more projects, because yeah. we got some some other some young writers coming along and uh, uh, need the same opportunity that we had, and I, I'm prayerfully hoping that they're preparing themselves uh, because when the call comes, y'all, you know, y'all got to be ready. Get your songs be ready. ready. 
And so that just like that opportunity came, a lot of those guys had no idea right. that they were going to have an opportunity to present their material and then it'd be selected to be a part of that uh, uh, monumental project. Yeah. I mean, it was just awesome the whole night. So, man, I tell you, well, listen, Doc, I tell you, this this has been enlightening and, and, and it's been awesome. And thank God for you taking the time. Now, listen, y'all, 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 y'all see Dr. Lavalley here and he's getting ready for a project. So y'all poise yourselves now because uh, we know, we already know what it's going to be when it finally hit the market. And you got to be prepared to get your copy and uh, get your choirs ready. Get the sopranos out, those tenors and basses, get them ready. Get them ready. I know you're going to find something on this release that's going to bless you and you can take to your church, your church choir, and then sing on Sunday morning. Man, I'm telling you. Well, listen, while the folk are chiming in, the uh, comment section, one by one, slow by slow. But uh, I want to thank you, man, for taking this time on a Sunday afternoon and just sharing a little bit. Now, listen, y'all, y'all need to know that all we did was a drop in the bucket on Jeffrey LaValle's history. I mean, but if we was to go day by day, week by week, year by year, everything, you we would be here another two, three hours. We would have to do a series of interviews. But I am, I am so uh, grateful and indebted to him taking the time and sharing with us uh, his own journey, his story in his own words to let us know, you know, what God has done in him, with him, and through him. And God is not through with him yet. We're looking forward to more greater things. Uh, like the scriptures say, the latter are going to be greater than the former. So yes, uh, we, we got expectations of it. Yes, Amen. Any last things you want to say to our audience? Yeah, breathe. It's been a rough year. The last yeah. year and a half has been rough. Breathe. Take yeah. your time and breathe. Allow God to saturate you with his presence. Allow him to lead you, allow him to guide you. And remember that you're not in this alone. You know, there are, are more people that are going through what you're going through. Uh, breathe, take your time and breathe. My God, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I know people be glad to hear that because it's, 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 it's been, it's been something navigating through these 10, 12 months of more yes, better trying to figure out how to do the right thing. And then the next thing folk had to decide to whether or not they're going to take the vaccine shot. And then now getting back, who's going back, when I'm going right. back, if I'm going back. Right. So it's just decision, decision, decisions. We still got to make them. We yeah. thank God for that. Well, man, I appreciate you. I can't say it enough. I'm going to pray. And listen, friends, if you missed any part of this, you'll be able to go back to Fellowship of Music and Arts, Bishop Andre S. Woods page, all of our pages, and view this again. Share it with your family and your friends, and then uh, sit back and listen to this great information, the wisdom from a legend, a living legend of gospel music, and the person of A, Jeffrey LaValle. Man, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to be out for this time. Father, we thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for the man of God, and we thank you for his words of wisdom. We thank you for his encouraging words, inspiring others, God. We thank you for how you've blessed him over the years yes. and how he's made yes. an impact upon all of our lives in the area of music. Thank you, God, for giving him new melodies, new words, God, and giving him new inspiration to continue yes. to write the songs of Zion. And we pray, God, that you will bless him continually as he go forth, whatever the need might be in his life, we pray you supplied in Jesus' name and all that his hands touch, we pray would prosper. We ask you, God, now, as we pray the prayer of Psalms 90, 17, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon him and establish 
the work of his hands upon him, yea, the work of his hands be established. Establish thou it. We pray that prayer in faith in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. All right, friends, you heard it right here. Amen. The one and only Jeffrey LaValle. Listen, join us next week. Uh, go to all of our platforms and uh, be a part of what we're doing next week. We're going to be talking to the woman of God, Pastor Yolanda Whitlow, pastor of the New Mount Pisgah Baptist Church here in the city of Detroit. Uh, we're going to talk about her legacy and how she continues the legacy of her father, uh, Dr. Whitlow, and she's taking over the ministry and doing phenomenal things. So join us next week, 4 p.m. right here for This Is My Story. Until then, Bishop Andre Wood saying, I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. Bless you, Jeff. Appreciate you. Bless you, Bishop. Thank you so much. You're welcome.